Uh, hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Bell Zona podcast, your go-to podcast for all things coatings and engineering. My name is Richard Bywater and today uh, we will be discussing rain erosion and the impact that it is having on the wind industry. Uh, so to do that, uh, I'm joined by two very special guests. Uh, later in the episode, I'll be joined by uh, one of our distributors, uh, Paul from Belltech in Norway, who's going to take us through uh, the practical applications uh, of the issue. Um, but first, uh, I'm very happy to say that I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Mr. Alexander Murillo, uh, who's going to take us through the basics of the problem. Alex, welcome. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you. Um, do you want to start just by, by telling, uh, telling the listeners a little bit about yourself uh, and a little bit about your, your experience at, at Belzona? Okay, first of all, hello everybody, great to have you here. Uh, my name is Alex Murillo. Uh, I'm the distributor and technical support manager for Belzona here in the Americas. Uh, been here for about a little bit over six years now, right? Um, and my current role is uh, as manager is I manage the team of engineers and technicians here in the Americas to give all type of uh, technical support to distributor network and to customers also on everything that's Belzona products and Belzona solutions. Fantastic. So uh, this work, is this kind of um, uh, cause you to, to work a lot within the wind industry? Well, within the wind is industry, it actually started when I, when I started with Belzona a couple of years ago. Uh, we did have wind solutions, uh, wind power solutions, uh, but uh, they kind of gave it to me. To, to, to try to like uh, give some support to it. So about five years ago, uh, I initially started uh, developing a, kind of a support team, support strategy with the leading edge protection solutions that we had during that time. And leading edge protection is basically uh, blade erosion uh, that happens on the leading edge of the turbines. It's actually one of the most critical problems in the market. Uh, and then after I, I worked with that, then uh, looked into other like solution areas that we have. Uh, specifically shaft repair, concrete rebuild, transformer leaks, and all other basic maintenance, maintenance needs in the wind industry that we could offer, correct? Yeah. And, um, and then recently, uh, you know, we've just evolved over the years. We've, we've, gotten very, uh, we've gotten involved a lot more in the wind industry. We've done very well. And uh, we just uh, helped develop in the last couple of years the new leading edge protection uh, coating called Belzona 5721 and the new uh, leading edge rebuild, because it's one thing, the coating versus the rebuild, the rebuild is to actually rebuild uh, the contour of the blade, yeah. and that's Belzona 5711. And uh, all that information, just so you know, uh, and all the products we're gonna have available in uh, Clean Power Expo coming up right now, uh, 2021 in December, uh, it got canceled and, and, and blocked and uh, you know rescheduled about three times because of yeah. of COVID, but we're finally there and it's going to be December uh, 2021, Salt Lake City. Beautiful city, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful environment, like Excellent. beautiful Salt Lake. Okay. Brilliant. So that's a, that, that's a uh, big exhibition that, that you guys over there in the States are, are going and, and, and exhibiting in and being a part of uh, later this year. So uh, fantastic. Okay. So, you know, um, the, the episode today, we're, we're here to talk about the, the problem uh, of rain erosion within the industry, um, and, and you know how it's kind of impacted the industry and, and, and its development. Best place to start with this is: um, could you explain to us and, and the listeners exactly what is rain erosion? Okay, so rain erosion, specifically in the wind industry, I mean it happens a lot, but specifically in the wind industry, it's um, it's the repeated high velocity impact of rainwater droplets uh, on the leading edge of the wind turbine blades, right? Uh, so rain's gonna come down from, from the clouds, uh, you got your rain clouds, and you got your turbine rotating at very high speeds, correct? Uh, especially on the leading edge. And, and the rain, of course, hits uh, the whole turbine uh, tower, the whole turbine, but that leading edge is the critical part. The leading edge, uh, in most of these new turbines, uh, the, the tips are going at about 180, 200 miles an hour. Sorry, you could do the conversion that uh, kilometers per hour where you're in the <laughs> States and you know how we, we manage things here, right? And uh, yeah, so yeah. At, at, these, at these speeds, the water droplets and the leading edge impact with considerably high energy, right? Uh, yeah. So that energy after time is just going to start eroding that, that leading edge area, especially where you have the higher velocities. And, uh, and it's considerably going to damage the blade over time. So that's 
really the problem. Uh, the rain droplets come in at high velocity, you have high velocity impact, and you get the erosion on the leading edge of the blades uh, over time. Okay. So why is this such a, an important issue? Why is it such a problem in the industry? I mean, honestly, man, this is like, this is a, almost the most critical uh, problem in, in the industry from an, a maintenance point of view, correct? Um, I mean, over time, uh, once, uh, once you've had so much impact, you're gonna lose a lot of material on that leading, that leading edge. And what, what happens is you're gonna lose your original aerodynamic design, right? Uh, okay. The blades are designed a certain way to, to keep efficiency, get as much uh, flow of the air and convert it to energy as, as, as best as possible, correct? Yeah. Uh, when you have that loss of aerodynamic design and material, uh, what's going to happen is that your rotation is not going to be efficient. You're going to have vibrations and you're going to have a, a loss of uh, efficiency of energy output, basically. Whatever energy you're supposed to get from the wind, you're going to lose a lot of that energy that you normally would. Uh, and that's one of the uh, initial problems, right? Then that's going to give you an, uh, a reduction, honestly, on your annual, annual energy production. So you're going to lose money yeah. there because you're not producing the energy you're expecting to produce, right? Yeah. And in some cases, when you have severe cases of leading edge erosion, you could lose up to 25% of that energy production on a turbine. Yeah. So 25%, I mean, imagine your bottom line, you're basically losing money, right? So that's, uh, that's a big problem uh, from an energy uh, savings point of view uh, or an energy production point of view. The other problem that it has is that it actually affects the rest of the components in the nasal. The nasal is uh, the big white, let's say, box on top that where you have your shaft, you have your gears, you have everything. Once you have all these vibrations happening because of the turbine uh, blades, and that's kind of the heavier component, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the rest of the nasal components. It could damage them. Uh, yeah. And you could have to stop your turbine, right? And then uh, there's cat catastrophic cases where the the uh, wind blades are so eroded that they just start breaking apart in midair when when you have high thund uh, uh, thunderstorms or high winds. It could affect it. So it's 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 a pretty bad problem. Wow. Okay. So so how has it affected the the, the wind industry in general? Then? I mean, it's really greatly affected it because. Um, in the first sense, of course, it's affecting your, your annual energy power output, right? What you, so yeah. you're, you're, it's affecting your bottom line, number one, right? On, on top of that, uh, it creates a great maintenance uh, problem for the wind farms and the wind industry itself when it, uh, because they really didn't expect it to be that aggressive or didn't really expect it initially, right? It's exactly. been almost a reactive approach to, uh, to, to it, right? So, of course, it's going to create extra costs. It's going to create extra downtime and extra... Uh, preventive uh, leading edge erosion maintenance schedules, right? Uh, and it's probably okay. the, uh, the single most critical maintenance issue in the wind industry today. Okay, so so what is being done to help reduce the, the impact on this problem? Um, I mean, there, there really isn't one agreed to solution. You know, there's a lot of different companies trying a lot of different things, right? Um, there's various uh, types of leading edge protection uh, solutions in the market. Uh, from tapes to different coatings, right? Uh, and they're going to vary uh, a lot of times in chemical makeup and application method. Uh, they may be different. There actually may be different rain erosion requirements uh, depending on your geographic location, depending mm -hmm. uh, local governments, uh, you know, or even, uh, you know, state governments. Europe, the European governments have a certain uh, uh, requirements versus the U.S. Testing is different. Uh, Testing might be more uh, strict or more aggressive when you're looking for coating for uh, wind turbines that are out in the ocean versus the ones that are out on land or smaller turbines. So it's you know so you you start by there right. You start by uh, choosing uh, right product, uh, going through proper testing, see how the product actually uh, how it actually performs, uh, and then relate that to what it could actually do in the field. And also a big problem is that these are very big, uh, uh, these are very big towers, very big blades and turbines. It's it's not easy to to apply these products, correct? So you're gonna have another logistical issue, which is you know you could either put them uh, in the factory or you could put them out in the field in situ, and that's gonna bring two big products, uh, two big problems because uh, a lot of products. Uh, that are complicated to apply and may be really good at protecting leading edge erosion are very complicated to apply. So you could only apply them uh, on the factory setting, right? 
they're uh, nonsensical to be able to be applied in the field. So you have a lot of these, uh, these issues. And then uh, another thing is that you're actually, the ones that are actually applied in the field, then you have all the environmental factors that are affecting you, right? First, the logistical factors. Uh, uh, how are you going to use, what are you going to use? Are you going to use tr uh, platform trucks? If you can't use platform trucks, ropes, uh, there's some sort of elevator type of systems, right? So you're going to have rain, you're going to have wind. Uh, after a certain uh, uh, speed of wind, you have to stop all type of like uh, work on the turbines. So these are some of the uh, the solutions that are, 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 or maintenance practices that are being applied, but they're all very challenging, right? So yeah. it is, it, it, you know, it's a problem. You have temperature, you have rain, you have everything that affects you basically when you're trying to do the repair out in the field. Okay. Okay, interesting. So it sounds like you're saying that there's, there's a lack of kind of standardization, not only in, in the kind of uh, uh, regulations and, uh, and testing, but also in terms of the, you know, the solutions that are there to kind of tackle this problem. And the solution is because uh, a lot of companies will offer a product uh, and, you know, it's it, it's like everything. Most people don't want to add to the bottom line and time of manufacturing, so they kind of brush it off. A lot of times, manufacturers all also, they just sell their, their wind turbines. It, it's kind of not their problem after a couple of years, right? So they, they don't want to add to their bottom line. So the, it ends up being the, far, uh, the the asset owner's problem or the farm owner's, uh, wind farm owner's problem. And, and then it, you're offered a product and a lot of times the product is not suitable to be applied in the field, right? So it's, yeah, I mean, there are solutions, but there, it's not a consensus yet on, on an actual a solution that fits all basically, right? Okay. And, and in terms of, of rain erosion uh, in general, is this looking to go away any anytime soon, or, or is this expected to continue to grow as, as a problem? I I think this is a growing problem. Um, it's and the problem is going to grow along with the growth of the newer turbines. The newer turbines, uh, they're just getting bigger. The bigger they are, the uh, the more area they can cover and the more energy they could pull out of the air, right? Uh, especially the 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 and and of course the bigger they are. The, the the more speed you're going to have on those on the leading edge and on the tips of those turbines right and it's going to create a more aggressive erosive environment uh that's especially true for the for the turbines in the sea correct uh those are the ones that are really the largest ones the the ones that are being put on the largest scale you have a lot of wind you have a lot of space to be able to put these turbines out there right uh and that's the problem the problem is uh, some of these blades are uh 370 feet uh, long, just the blade, and that's the size of an that's the size of an American football field. So on one blade. So imagine how large those are, right? So uh, they're getting bigger. Uh, you have aggressive environments. It's only going to get just more aggressive, right? I mean, of course, uh, with that, we're hoping that the technology is going to going to keep up, uh, and uh, and we could medic try to mediate uh, try to help mediate some of these issues. But even then, uh, with good leading edge erosion coatings, still after two or three years, even from a factory uh, application point of view, two or three years later, they, they start getting eroded. So uh, you're, you're going to have to go on and, and fix them at one point anyways, right? Uh, yeah. Another thing is that, like, you know, uh, you're seeing the, the, this in turbines that are out in the field. Uh, a lot of uh, old turbines are coming out of their life cycle. You're putting up mm -hmm. uh, new farms, so I mean, the, the, these are just issues that 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 you're gonna have uh, in the long term, and um, and I don't really think it's it's a matter of is this a growing problem. I think this is just what it is. It's just gonna be basic maintenance uh, required uh, in the future, no matter what. It has to be planned in. I don't think it's an issue that you're gonna fix with one uh, magical coating or, or one amazing solution. I think it's just going to be uh, the industry is just going to have to be pre be prepared to lower the impact, and uh, you know work with technology and more modernized maintenance practices to to be able to at least control the problem. Brilliant, Alex. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you uh, and, your, and your input today. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, great to be here, and hello to everybody. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, we're now going to go to the next part of the episode where we're going to talk to um, one of our distributors. Uh, Mr. Paul Falch, 
uh, who is going to give us his insight and experience to the practical side of rain erosion and what that means to his customers. Yeah, uh, my name is Paul Falk. Uh, I've been with uh, Belltech now for close to five years. Okay. Belltech in, uh, in Norway have been in operation approximately 15 years. We yeah. changed name from Khan Technologies to Belltech Solutions for three and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, Alf, my colleague, he has been in the company close to 15 years. Uh, basically, it's just the two of us serving, serving Norway. Um, yeah. Historically, oil and gas, onshore and offshore, have been the the main market, so to say, but but also we do quite a lot into the marine section and general industry yeah. in, in, in general. And now also the last two years we have been working towards uh, various wind parks. We have quite a lot of wind parks in Norway and starting to be... We don't do a lot at the moment, but we are on board with two wind parks, serving them now for the second year. They are very happy with the products we provide. And the, the wind park industry in Norway is quite, it's quite small. So yeah. they all talk together. Okay. So we deliver 110% service to the two wind parks we have on board and they okay. talk to the other parks and we have had some uh, questions from other wind parks, so hopefully the business will uh, will pick up in the, in the years to come. Excellent. Okay. So you, you mentioned some of the, uh, the, the the kind of services and applications that the Belltech offer. Is uh, you know is that kind of just technical advice? That obviously the products uh, that, that you guys uh, provide as well for the Norwegian region. Yeah. In 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 general, we do not perform any applications ourselves. Uh, we basically sell the products to the end user or the contractor in between. And it is in general the contractors who does the, the application. We have, uh, in, on some jobs, we have been there as supervisors, but it is the contractor who is responsible for performing the job. Okay. So, uh, so obviously, you know, to, today's episode is uh, we're, we're discussing rain erosion and, uh, yeah. and, and the, the problems associated to, uh, to, to rain erosion in, in leading edge protection for, for wind turbine blades. Um, what, from, from a kind of practical sense, why is rain erosion such a problem for, for your customers? Yeah, number one, we have quite a lot of rain in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. no, <laughs> Norway is quite, it's not a big country, but from the southern part to up north, it's uh, two and a half hours flying. Yes, up, okay. Up, up north, we have the, the most northern wind park in the world, basically. They have extremely harsh conditions in six months of the year. And here down south, uh, one park we have on board, Lista, it's very close to the North Sea, of course. Mm -hmm. Extremely much strong winds and bad weather. And yeah. rain erosion is, um, is a very big problem for them, for the, for the leading edge on the, um, on the blades, of course. Yeah. It creates a lot of damages to the blades. Yeah, okay. So yeah, actually, you mentioned the, uh, the, the the most northerly uh, wind park in, in the world, and I, just through our, our previous conversations, that's something that, that we tried to go and visit. I think a couple of years ago, or we yeah. certainly talked about. That's actually in the Arctic Circle, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, one hour drive from the North Cape. Wow. It's the, the, so so it is extremely harsh conditions up there. Yeah. Okay. So so what are the the practical consequences and, and the practical challenges that, that rain erosion is, is throwing up for these these wind parks and these, uh, these yeah the, <laughs> number one for the two wind wind parks we have on board is they, they have a lot of wear and tear on the leading edge it's okay. leading to loss in production of course and also yeah. they have to do quite a lot of maintenance every every year and they have quite a limited number of months where they can do the maintenance due to the weather okay uh, high winds, etc. So it's they were looking for a solution that could provide better protection over a longer time period. Okay, okay. So a, a bit more of a uh, a weather a larger weather window for for application. If 
Yeah, and, 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 and also to have a leading edge solution that instead of doing maintenance every second or third year, they yeah. could postpone the, the maintenance service period up to a, quite a longer time span. Yeah, okay. So, so you mentioned some of the consequences there being uh, this loss of, uh, uh, of um, AEP, isn't it, or, or kind of um, energy production. There, yeah. There's a financial kind of figure that you can attach to that, I suppose, isn't it, in terms of... Yeah, yeah, uh, they, they, there are some reports out there saying in percent the energy production yeah. loss from 5% up to 10, 15 maybe. But, yeah. but of course, it, it, it varies. But the main problem for them is when they have this heavy rain erosion, you have a lot of damages to the blades. And if you do not fix it within a certain period, you might get some damage, damages on the um, construction in the blade, so to say. Okay, so, yeah. so they need to fix it as soon as they can so that so the damage do not become even bigger. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and and you've mentioned obviously the, the very harsh conditions of, up in Norway. Uh, uh, you mentioned rain, but obviously snow, I can imagine as well, is, is a bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah, snow and, and it, what do you call it? The, the ice uh, hail? Is that what hail, you call it? Hail, yeah. Yeah, sleet and, yeah. yeah, for example, the, 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 the wind park at Lista, which is down south in Norway, they, this summer they have had the opportunity to use a lift not more than 20 25 days okay right due, okay. due to heavy wind right because also wind it's, is obviously a factor for, for these these repairs as well then yeah, yeah of course because the, at, at least they use uh, a lift it goes up to 55 60 meters and they are okay. not allowed to use it if if the wind is stronger than eight nine meter per second yeah okay. and that's not too much but <laughs> eight meter per second is not heavy wind no. But of course, when you're on a lift 60 meters up, it's, you get quite a lot of movement. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so that also limits the, the, the time period where they can do maintenance. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, if, if you have no wind, but then you have rain again. <laughs> so the, the weather window is quite, uh, quite small, actually. Okay. Oh, so, so kind of, uh, the, there's a number of factors here then to, to kind of consider when, when you're looking at... Uh, uh, repair to do this type of repair then and it's interesting that you're saying that it's not just something that you can just go and, and repair any time of the year it sounds like there's quite a, a small period that contractors can go out yeah. especially well, in your region yeah the, uh, uh, as I said the, the two parks we have on board they are down south in Norway and they yeah. basically they plan to start the maintenance from uh, April and continue until beginning of September but then yeah. you have the weather in between, so, you, yeah. so so they need to have the right conditions in in order to do the maintenance. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so you know, we, we've spoken about some of the challenges that, that this rain erosion issue is, is, is throwing up. Um, why 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 are your customers then? Uh, what why are they interested in in uh, an LEP solution and, and what can kind of you offer in terms of, uh, of Belzone products? To, yeah, to when, address that. when uh, when Belsona launched uh, 5721 yeah. a couple of years ago, we we started a how can we say it a marketing campaign addressing the the wind park uh, directly. We sent a lot of information. Of course, in the beginning we didn't get too much response, but we kept going with sending information and calling. Yeah. In the end, one of the operation managers at uh, Jern, uh, one of the wind parks, it turned out that he had been working in uh, an offshore service company before. Okay. And he knew about Belsona. Hi, okay. Yes. So when he realized that, okay, ah, it is the same, uh, <laughs> same kind of company, then he at the end said yes to a meeting. Yeah. We went up there, Alf and myself, we did... Uh, uh, general presentation and talked a lot about the products and um, explained as good as we could the benefit of 5721 compared to what he used before. Yeah. Uh, he got uh, actually very interested. We agreed to set up a live demo of the product. Yeah. We actually in our warehouse made some small dummies of a blade. 
okay. out of old wrapping products. So, yeah. so in order for us to have a kind of profile to that looked like a blade, yeah. we took uh, a grind, grinder and created some um, various damages okay. into the into the structure. Then we went up there and had a demo for him and his team to show the, the ease of use and how to use the product. And, and then basically they they said yes, we would like to try this. Okay. Do you know what, just, just just for everybody on uh, on on our YouTube channel who will be watching this, I think we actually be able to put some uh, some pictures of, of because I, I know I've seen some pictures of the yeah uh, yeah yeah. The, I think the, you have. I yeah I have sent you some pictures, but if you need more, uh, let me know. I'll send we'll, you send you more we'll, pictures. We'll, we'll put them in the show notes. Yes, that's the right terminology. Sorry, we'll put them in the show notes so people can see on on the on uh, on, on the YouTube uh, channel. But. Uh, yeah, sorry. Can, can continue. Yeah, yeah, and and then after after we had the the, the first meeting and uh, yeah. demo from our side of uh, our side, then he agreed to okay, let's go for a try. Yeah, we we created even more dummies uh, leading edge. Yeah, and we went up there and we had a full training course at their premises where mm -hmm. we went through everything uh, about the product, how to how to make a nice uh, surface and then yeah. 5721 on top. Excellent. How to mix it, uh, HMS, various things we had to cover yeah. and, and how to apply it. Okay, so it's kind of a, a, an introduction to exactly what 5721 yeah, uh, is, we, we, is a, we, is we, we started with a couple of hours of uh, presentation going yeah. through the data blades, how to use um, everything around the product. And then we okay. went down to the to the workshop where we divided all of the, the guys up there in teams of two. Yeah. They got each one of the, the dummy leading edge. And then we went through the whole process of mixing the material, preparation, okay. applying the product. Okay. Uh, let the product cure out, and then we took on a um, second coat. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, and then they went all in basically with 5721. And now they have used it for the second year. And what they say so far, both at uh, Jaren and on Lista, is that the product is very good, still uh, perfect conditions after, yeah, now it's two and a half years since they yeah. first put it on the first blade. And, uh, both Lista and Jaren have now moved, um, yeah, to, to fifty-seven twenty-one. Fantastic. So, just just for the listeners who, who might not be uh, who might not be familiar with, with uh, Belzona fifty-seven twenty-one, um, could you just give a brief description of, of, of the basics of it? What what kind of fundamentally it is? You know, for example, it's a coating product. But just yeah, kind of elaborate from there. Fifty-seven twenty-one is a, is a coating for for leading edge protection. Yeah comes in two colors, white and, 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 uh, and gray. Um, mm -hmm. It comes in uh, quite a good uh, volume <laughs> kind of box, so it's easy to bring up in a lift. You can uh -huh. mix it when you're up there in a lift or by rope. Mm -hmm. It's uh, easy to apply. You get a very nice and smooth surface. Yeah. And compared to some other products out there, it 5721 is is not 100% solid, so it absorbs some of the energy, mm -hmm. and and that's probably one of the key factors for um, for the long lifespan of 5721. Yeah, and also it's quite interesting because because uh, I know we've worked together uh, quite a lot on, on um, some of these uh, types of applications, and then certainly work in the wind industry. Uh, but it's interesting that that when the product was designed it's been designed to be an in situ applied product hasn't it whereas uh it can be applied you know in a, in a factory in a, in a, in a kind of uh, uh, workspace on, on new blades but it's been fundamentally designed for ease of application hasn't it yeah Which... yeah and 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 that's also a very important thing because if they need to shut down a wind park yeah. take down a blade and move to a warehouse it will easily take uh, weeks and, yeah. and and of course the cost will be uh, extremely high yeah oh. but now what we have seen uh, on the two wind parks is they managed to do 
two to two and a half blades in a, in a long day shift. Right. Okay. So and and of course we are aiming with uh, with to to train them even more. They get to use the products even more. The 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 aim is to to do three blades a day. Wow. Okay. Good. So two guys practice, and, and <clears throat> three blades. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so you mentioned there uh, some of your customers uh, obviously have, have adopted the product now as as their kind of go to uh, protection solution. Um, what were the, the key standouts that, that made it different from you know what, what was currently on the market, what was being used by, by your customers? Uh, some of the products they have used before is, has a different kind of structure and finish. Okay. Uh, so which led to quite, which led to quite high level of, of maintenance. Yeah. So 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 they wanted to, to try another solution which has a much longer lifespan, of course, okay. because then they can save time and money. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, cool. So uh, a lot of the the, the applications that, that this product has been designed for then will be for, for the repair of already damaged blades. Uh, I know we mentioned then before that it was. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, uh, at, at one of the parks they have even coated a, a blade with fifty seven twenty one that was in in perfect condition. They Excellent. just wanted okay. to to put on fifty seven twenty one <laughs> up front to yeah. to to make sure they have a have a longer lifetime on on that specific blade. Brilliant. Okay. Do you know what that that serves a perfect example actually? So uh, the the fifty seven twenty one is the coating product is, is designed there for. For the protection aspect uh, against this this kind of rain erosion problem, but you know we're, we're talking about in situ application. The the protection aspect isn't the whole story, is it? Um, there is an aspect where you know if, if you have particularly heavy damage on a blade, there is uh, you, you, I believe the term is, is pitting. Say say again, please. It's uh, it's raining quite a lot here at the moment. So. <laughs> no problem. I was gonna yeah. Well, we're talking about the extensive rain in Norway, and, and obviously we can hear yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, heavily damaged blades, you, you get quite uh, like a lot of pitting damage. I think is the term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that where you know? Uh, would you use fifty seven twenty one to to repair that, or or the other methods? No. If, what we have seen is if there is. Um, uh, a deeper damage that, that uh, goes a bit deeper than just the surface. We 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 need to have a we we need to have a solution for that as well. So up to now we have uh, presented twelve twenty one okay. as the pit filling solution to to okay. create an even and, and smooth surface before the fifty seven twenty one goes on top. Okay, excellent. So that that is uh, that's as opposed to a, a coating product. That is more of a paste. Yeah, the twelve twenty one is a, is a paste grade, and yeah. it has a very short uh, time before you have to use it. It yes. uh, hardens in a couple of minutes. Yeah. So for for smaller damages, uh, twelve twenty one is is quite okay. Yeah. Uh, but of course, if we have bigger areas with deeper damages, then yeah. we um, yeah, as you know, Persona have started to develop fifty seven eleven. Yeah. Absolutely. Which we have tested on uh, on two parks, and and the feedback so far is fifty seven eleven is extremely good, saves a lot of time, and it goes hundred percent together with fifty seven twenty one. Fantastic. So so yeah, again for for listeners, fifty seven eleven is uh, I believe it's Bell's owner's first uh, pace grade pace grade product that has been specifically designed for. Uh, this type of application for the application yeah, on yeah. on wind turbine blades to uh, to rebuild the profile of of kind of damage caused by by rain erosion. And, uh, yeah, and and, and and that's uh, as we talked about in the beginning. If they do not do the the leading edge repair in time, then it will create deeper damages where you have have to use other materials to 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 fix it. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned the kind of um, the the way that these products kind of work together, um, they they've very much kind of been specifically designed to to uh, to kind of interact in terms of you know uh, ease of use. So the, the pace grade 
or do the the, the pitting yeah yeah uh, yeah the, 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 the good thing about it is you can bring 5711 and 5721 up in the lift um, then you need of course you need to do the brushing and all that up front clean everything properly you can apply 5711 wait uh, the time it needs to be to be cured and then you can apply 5721 directly on top of it yeah and that of course saves uh, a lot of time you don't have to to use a grinder again or polish it yeah. and, and, and prepare it you can use it in more or less one operation so there's that chemical bond between the, uh, the yeah, two yeah, products. Yeah. And so so it's and now after we did the um, the various tests, as you know, with fifty seven eleven this year, the, the feedback on that one is is also perfect. So um, yeah, we uh, we have a very good combination of two products to to go to all the wind parks to yeah. to start the promotion even more. Yeah, and you mentioned there the the, the kind of time saving. That is that real value in. In, in these yeah, the, the, the time saving and uh, yeah, and also the cost of products. Our our products is is not um, that expensive compared yeah. to if they can take three blades in a day. It's yeah. uh, it's a huge saving for the for the operator. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, I I know you, you mentioned uh, for for Belltech and, and and the work you're doing in Norway. You know, the past two years, you've you've started to really kind of uh, get into the industry, and, and and this problem is kind of been cropping up. Do you see it continuing to, to be an issue, or even like a growing issue going into the, the future? Uh, we will never get away from the issue with rain erosion. Yeah. <laughs> there will be even more and more wind parks uh, here in Norway and globally, I guess. Yeah. Uh, of course, fifty seven twenty one will need after a certain amount of period it needs a, a new coating on top of it yeah but of course uh, it will be an ongoing market yeah and, uh, and especially after the warranty period on the wind parks typical three to five years uh, yeah. it's more or less up to the to the wind park to decide what to use uh, so there will be big uh, opportunities uh, moving forward but of course we have competition but um, that's a part of the game Brilliant. Paul, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, no you problem. Um, and, uh, yeah, let me know if we can assist uh, with anything else. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay. Bye. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the content as always. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, or simply follow the podcast on, uh, on your go to provider. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Uh, for any more information on anything that we've discussed today, please head to the Belzona website, www.belzona.com. Uh, and as a reminder, if you guys have any feedback for us, uh, if you have any questions on anything we've spoken about, or you've got any input in terms of future topic and content that you want us to cover, you can get in touch on our brand new podcast email address, which is podcast at belzona.com. I'd uh, just like to finish off by thanking the two guests today, uh, Mr. Alex Murillo uh, and Paul Fox from Belltech. Um, thank you guys for listening and until next time, goodbye.